you're gonna be center stage here. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed that when girls eat fire, they get a lot of pictures taken. <laughs> I have no idea why this is. Uh, 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 uh. Woo! Am I sexy yet? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, Sputnik, here it is. Your moment to shine. Shine, don't burn. <laughs> Seriously! <laughs> oh, well, I'm Melissa. This is Vitaly. Uh, I have a show called Cirque du Sewer, the world's only trained cat and rat circus. And he's my rat's ass istant. And could you give a URL? Spell it out if we need. Oh, uh, so we're at www.cirquedusewershow.com. And we're Cirque du Sewer on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Did I name them all? I think that's everything. One? Yeah, all the things. All right, so what does BF Skinner mean to you? <laughs> what does Skinner mean to me? So I actually did take psychology in college, and we actually did train the rats. It wasn't like a mean Skinner box where they got electrocuted. Uh, we trained the rats to press the lever in the Skinner box. And I fell in love with my lab rat, and I would come early every day to the lab, and I would greet the rat, and he knew when I walked in the door. Like, from across the lab, I would enter, and he'd get all excited, and he'd be jumping up in his cage, and I'd pull him out, and I'd pet him, and I'd give him love, and then when I had to put him back in the cage, like, I would cry, and he would go, like, squeaky, and it was a whole thing. And could you tell people out there, do you believe that cats or rats have emotion or do they have a completely different cognition from humans? I mean, yeah, I think they, they have feelings. Like, you can see when they get scared, you can see when they're happy, you can see when they get jealous, for sure. I'm not saying that they have the same exact rich inner life that humans might have, but who's to say? I don't know, they haven't told me. And could you talk about the idea of training rats and cats because an average person probably thinks that these animals are untrainable. I mean, anyone who knows training knows that rats are totally trainable. They're super smart. That's why they use them for psychological experiments. They learn everything really fast. Uh, cats are frustrating because cats get distracted really easily. Uh, cats aren't always as food motivated as rats are and the cats will have little attitudes. So they do uh, as many behaviors as the rats do, just a lot slower. And could you tell me about your, or tell the people out there in television land, mm -hmm. your life choice? Do you sometimes regret the path that you've taken? I know you make light of it in your show. Yeah. I really can't imagine anything else I would be doing. I, I think it's pretty amazing and random that I found myself with a cat and rat circus. But uh, I've been doing it for like 10 years now, and when I first had the idea 10 years ago to do it, everyone thought, well, that sounds crazy. And they still think it sounds crazy, but it's crazy and it worked. And you rescued me from waiting tables, yeah. and that's awesome. Uh, and all rescues. <laughs> In this era, it seems to be hypersensitive about uh, ethnic jokes, but you make sort of uh, funny remarks about Russian stereotypes. Could you talk about that? Well, I mean, he actually was born in the Soviet Socialist Republic. So I'm, there's really nothing I say in my show that isn't true. It just sounds like a joke because my life sounds like a joke. <laughs> I don't know. 
But yeah, like, so I make a joke about my Polish heritage and I make a few jokes about him being Russian. But I, I feel like we're, we're allowed to do that. Yeah, I think so. Right? It's okay when we say it. No, no one else does it, right? And, and there is uh, historically uh, animosity and old hatred between Poland and Russia. Do, do you make light of that, or does that not enter you your... Know, we haven't dug that deep. It's, it's like a 45-minute cat and rat circus. Okay. And, and I, I've seen that everyone has laughed at every one of your jokes. Oh, yeah? So you hit every joke. That's amazing. Uh, could you talk about maybe a performance that might have gone bad and why? Oh, oh there's so many. I mean, the, the most epic one was the one here last year. I think it was the last weekend. Yeah. It was, it was so high. It was like 95 or something, and none of the cats want to do anything. And I, I was like, if I can just get the cat to sit on my head, juggle the knives on, on the point shoes, that's all we gotta do. And like, I couldn't even get that. Like, they wouldn't even sit on my head while I juggled the knives. And um, like, I just tried every single cat, and every single cat jumped off of me and ran backstage. And I was like, practically crying on stage. I, I forget how I got through it, but I did the show. And I went home, and I was sitting in my air conditioning. Like drinking a little whiskey, thinking, My okay, at least only years, what a hundred people saw that show. The show is over. We can forget about well, it. No one's ever gonna see it. Years. It's fine. And then my phone starts blowing up because some like influential blogger went to see it and videotaped it. And so there was the video of me like crying and cats running away, and it already had ten thousand views. <laughs> <laughs> it got way more by the time it was done. Yeah, it got way more by the time it was done. It's so <laughs> All right, packing now wasn't going to turn for me, so maybe you will. Sputnik? Nope, nope, nope. Sputnik? Nope. Sputnik? Sputnik, turn. Turn. Keep going. Ha ha! some animal stereotypes. First of all, you have a rat named Influenza, and could you talk, talk about the actual spread of the disease? <laughs> okay, well, uh, so I started with, 10 years ago, I got three rats, and I'm doing a rat fair. So I named the rats Pandemic, Bubonic, and Ebola. And I kind of like the theme, so I just, throughout the years, I stuck with that. So I've had Pandemic, Bubonic, Ebola, E. coli, Sepsis, Pestis, Pestilence, Sniffles, Salmonella, um, and that was when I started switching. I got girl rats. So I had Candida and Polyp, the small and benign. Uh, influenza, Rubella. Bubani. Bubani. Oh, Then there was, we had a, a bald rat named Alopecia, but she never quite made it into the show. And, uh, Mercer. Mercer. Oh, Mercer. And, um, yeah, now we have Varicella. Mm -hmm. And Hanta and Amonia. Oh, and we just adopted a pair. They're, they're little tiny babies. We adopted them yesterday. So we're, we're thinking of cholera. And malaria. Cho cholera and malaria. And so is it true that fleas cannot be trained? <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't tried yet, but with the, with all those cats, we should have the raw materials. <laughs> but just to wrap up the animal stereotypes, uh, you have cats mm -hmm. and rats. Mm -hmm. Aren't they supposed to... Uh, well, behave they, differently toward each other? Um, I mean, if, if I had mice, then I would expect the cats to go after them because they're small, but my cats are pretty well fed, and the rats are pretty big, and my rats, most importantly, do not act like prey animals, so they've always had a full run of the trailer before I got the cats, so, like, the rat will run right up in the cat's face, and the cat's just like, oh, 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 oh what's happening, what's happening? So it's only when the rats turn around and they see the tails that they pounce, because it looks like string, but uh, they they haven't really gone after them. In fact, we had um, Sputnik and Hanta had a nose touch. Was, that was pretty beautiful. So sweet. My my rat Candida 
was in love with Padky Meow when he was a kitten, and she would chase him everywhere and just try to cuddle him, but he was so oh, scared. Oh, that, that time that we, that we were driving, and, and like the, 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 the enclosure wasn't like rat oh, right, and we, and we looked around as we were driving, and the rat. They couldn't find the rat. Like, we pulled into a gas station, and the rat wasn't in the enclosure, and we're freaking out, like, where did the rat go? Where's the rat? Where's the rat? And we looked into the cat's crate. And she was just like, she was trying to curl up with the cat, and the cat's like against the bar. It's like, put me out of here, help! A little bit of jumping today. Hey, Padgy, now. Padgy, now. Are you ready for the next one? Yeah. Come on, Padgy, television performances? Um, yeah, so we were on the gong show and we did the rehearsal with the cat. We we're going to do the cat ballet and the cat was great and he was doing everything in rehearsal and everyone's like, this is brilliant. No one's ever seen a cat perform. It's going to be great. And then when we go to, on stage, there was a live band that wasn't there before. And we're like on the other side of this thin curtain and the band strikes up and the cat freaks out and like every claw goes into my flesh. Like they had to have makeup cover up the blood like it hurt because the cat was just freaking out. So like all the claws dig in and I'm like, oh great. This is this is gonna be five minutes of torture. The cat's not gonna do a thing. I have no idea what I'm gonna do right now. I better figure it out. And so yeah, I just tried to play it off like a cloud routine. Hey, and, you, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I mean like it, I actually got a lot more FaceTime because instead of it being an animal act, it was just like a torture show <laughs> where there's all these close-ups of me dying a little inside on camera. The pack now. As we have been training for the past six years, if you would just jump on that platform. Come on, buddy, come on. Yeah. Hey, if you thought that was impressive, See how high he jumps when I don't want him on something. Could you talk about your uh, performance training? You know, uh, I thought I misheard you when you said it was a slack rope instead of a tight rope. How, how did you learn all these yes, things? Yes, it is a slack rope. Um, I actually went to Circus Center of San Francisco, which is where I started learning slack rope. Um, before that, I really did study ballet for many years. So when I was first learning slack rope, I had really pretty minimal instruction. There weren't any teachers for it but I developed a series of exercises based on ballet bar and center work that I do on the rope itself every day. So I start off with like a port de bras on the rope and I'll do like extensions on the rope. And I started training Vitaly to walk on the rope. So for a year before I even let him try the rope, I made him do a ballet bar with me every day. And after a year, he finally touched his toes for the first time, which is pretty <laughs> epic. A true story. My mother's maiden name was Solansky, which means every time I dance is a pole dance. <laughs> no, no, guys, it's fine. My mom hates that joke, too. <laughs> Balancing. <laughs> On a half inch, gently swing. Dangerous trick I do. So if it looks good, 
I, I, she doesn't keep sitting on the sleeves. <laughs> it looks good. I'll fall. Oh, it gets better. <laughs> and if I fall, call my mom. And I noticed that you have a disclaimer. You make sure the audience knows that no animals were endangered at any point. Uh, why do you feel compelled to say this? I mean, I would assume it's obvious, but uh, you know, I just I do want to make that clear. I would hate to think of anyone going home and like trying to get their cats to jump through a fire hoop or anything. And I imagine like someone could be just walking by and see like a fire hoop and a cat, and then think that like. We're making them jump through hoops and we're terrible people, which I hope they don't. I hope they can realize while they're watching it that it's just like staged. But you never know. People don't pay close attention. The flaming hoop of why don't I have a real job? <laughs> I suggest you guys all pay really close attention. Standing on this rope could be my only moment of animal free glory. <laughs> All right, I have finally made it to the last show of the day. <laughs> Which means there's only about five more minutes between me and Beer 30. <laughs> and all I've got to do is grab that. I'm feeling saucy. <laughs> I will attempt to rarely perform sideways back. Do you have any advice for people of what not to do to either rat or cat ever? What not to do to yeah. rats or cats ever? Yeah. I mean, don't, don't be mean. Yeah, don't be mean. <laughs> don't be a don't jerk. Don't be a jerk. Same for people. <laughs> be respectful. Be loving. And uh, should they be blamed for any diseases or pandemics? Or should it be fleas? You know what? They, they finally came out with uh, it wasn't the rats, it was the fleas on the rats. They. They were cleared a few years ago. It's very important. All right, so they've been vindicated. I mean, like, I've never heard of anyone getting a disease from a rat. There was, but like, we've as... both gotten ringworm from the cats. <laughs> so if anyone's spreading disease in that house, it's those cats. <laughs> the rats are actually the cleanest performers of the, over here at the Red Fair. It's true. The, the rats bathe more often than any <laughs> other performer you're going to see out here today. And... This man has no health insurance! <laughs> Back in the former Soviet Socialist Republic, your own mother would have stood in line for an hour to get you fire to eat. <laughs> it wouldn't even have been hot. <laughs> My point is, God bless America, put that in your face hole! <laughs> Little windy today, isn't it? There is one gentleman who hula hoops, not fire, 
on a slack line. The world's record is for about two minutes, but it don't look any better after five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and that is about what we're going.